Negative keywords are an integral portion of any Google Ads search campaign. They help you make sure that any of the search queries coming through your keywords are high intent and relevant to your business. Now, there are a number of different ways you can apply negative keywords to your account, and there are also some nuances between the match types and how they work to exclude low quality searches. So in this video, I want to walk you through how those match type differentiators work and how they're different from negative keywords to regular keywords, and then show you all the different layers in a Google Ads account where you can apply negative keywords. I want to start off by talking about the fundamentals of negative keywords and this help article from Google is actually one of the better resources because it has some good examples and some charts that will help illustrate how these match types will work. One note that I'll have as we're going through this article, you'll notice that there are going to be a number of references to display and video negative keywords. I'm not going to be talking about those today. I'm only going to be talking about search campaign negative keywords. Maybe we'll put together a video in the future about display and video negatives, but for today, it's just search. So for those of you new to negative keywords, let's give a quick overview of what negative keywords are and what the goal is. So I'm going to scroll down a little bit. And as you can see in this first paragraph after that intro thing, negative keywords let you exclude search terms from your campaigns and focus on only keywords that matter to your customers. If you watched the video that we put together earlier this year on keyword match types, you'll know that depending on which match type you select, Google will match to a number of different search terms and some will be more closely related to your keywords than others. If you need a refresher on that, you can check out the video at the top of the screen right now. But the long and short of it is just because you add a keyword with specific words in that keyword, it doesn't mean that that's the only thing that your ads are going to show for. So if we come down a little bit, Google gives an example that I think does a pretty good job. Let's say that you're an optometrist and you sell eyeglasses. While eyeglasses might be technically the right term, not everybody refers to them as eyeglasses. For the most part, people just call them glasses. But there are a couple different types of glasses. There are the ones you put on your face and there are the ones you drink out of. So if you have a number of keywords that are focusing on glasses, you might notice in your search terms, as Google shows at the bottom of this paragraph that I have highlighted, that people might search for wine glasses or drinking glasses. Those obviously are not what you're trying to sell. So good uses of negative keywords would be to add wine, and drinking to your campaign to ensure that you'll still show up for searches that are about glasses that could be the ones that go on your face, but nothing that has to do with wine or drinking. So that's effectively how they work. You get to exclude certain searches based on how related they are to your business once you see them show up in the search term report. Now, as I've mentioned a few times, just like your regular keywords, negative keywords have match types. And depending on which match type you use, you're going to be excluding more or less specific types of phrases. So let's start to get into these match types. As you can see here, there are three different match types for negative keywords, broad, phrase, and exact, and they do work differently than the positive keyword counterparts. The biggest difference is going to be the use of close variants, and I will use an example to illustrate that here in just a second, but just know close variants are something that you're going to have to counteract in negative keywords. So the first type of negative keyword we're going to look at is negative broad match. Just like with regular keywords, broad match negative keywords have no punctuation around them. You'll see that it's just running shoes. Jumping ahead a little bit, negative phrase match will have the quotation marks and exact match will have the brackets that the positive keyword counterparts do. So all the punctuation is going to be the same. But for negative broad match, your ad won't show if the search contains all negative keyword terms, even if the terms are in a different order. Your ad may still show if the search contains only some of your keyword terms. So as you can see here, the negative keyword in this first chart is going to be running shoes. And in the chart down below, we get an idea of which terms will show and won't show an ad. The first one is blue tennis shoes. Since running is not part of that query, your ad will still show. The opposite is true for the second one. Running is the keyword that's being used, but shoe does not match perfectly with shoes, so the ad will still show for running shoe as a query. This is where that close variance distinction comes in. For negative keywords, if you do not want running shoe to show up, you will need to make sure that you have either running shoe or just shoe as a negative keyword. Google will not extend shoes as a multiple to the singular shoe version. It will assume that you want to show up for running shoe since it's not a negative keyword phrase. The remaining examples are all going to be excluded. 
So blue running shoes, obviously running and shoes are both in that. The second option is shoes running. Again, both individual words of the negative keyword phrase are in there, shoes and running. They're just in a different order. And then running shoes, that one makes perfect sense. That one's gonna be excluded because it's a perfect match to the negative keyword we have. So every time you add a negative broad match term, remember that as many individual words as you add to that term, they all have to be present in the search query and they all have to be the exact match of the individual word for it to be excluded. As a best practice, if you really just want to exclude the word shoes, it's best to just make sure that you have shoes as the word and not add in running or anything like that. I try to make my negative keywords as short as I possibly can while still making sure that they are targeting only the aspect of the queries that I don't like and it's for this reason. Now let's talk about phrase match. It's going to be a little bit more specific. So your ad won't show if the search contains the exact keyword terms in the same order. The search may include additional words, but the ad won't show as long as all the keyword terms are included in the search term in the same order. So we have the exact same example with the same queries showing up down below. So for phrase match running shoes, the first and second option will still show up because running shoes is not found there. And then the second from the bottom, shoes running, will also show up because those terms are in the wrong order for this phrase match negative keyword. The only queries we'll be blocking are going to be blue running shoes and running shoes by itself. So you can see here how phrase match is quite a bit more restrictive than broad match. And getting even more restrictive is going to be exact match down here. For negative exact match keywords, your ad won't show if the search contains the exact keyword terms in the same order without any extra words. So as you can see here, all four of those top queries will still show up because they are not exact match running shoes. The only one that will be excluded is the bottom because it is the exact match of the negative keyword. Negative exact match keywords can be really useful for query mapping within an account where you're trying to make sure that certain terms show up only in certain ad groups or campaigns for better ad copy control. They're also very useful for queries that can be slightly adjusted and mean completely different things. The example they give here isn't as good, but in previous help articles, Google used the example of milk chocolate and chocolate milk. Those are two very different things, but there's only two words in that search term. And just by rearranging the order, you get quite a different outcome. So if you're trying to advertise milk chocolate, you probably need to use chocolate milk as an exact match negative to make sure that you don't show up there. Now, while they might not be used very often, let's talk about symbols in negative keywords because this is a good distinction. You can use three different types of symbols within your negative keywords. You can use ampersands or that and sign. You can use accent marks and you can use asterisks. Any use of these symbols will be a different negative keyword than the use without symbols. I think that the last sentence of this does a really good job of explaining it. So cafe without the accent mark and cafe with it will be treated differently. Same as socks and shoes with the ampersand and socks and shoes with the and word in the middle of it. Those are different line items. And if you have socks and shoes excluded from your campaign, the socks and shoes search term will still show up. So depending on how these symbols are showing up in your search terms report, it will make sense to add both of them as negatives if you're seeing a lot of symbols come through. For the most part, all other symbols are going to be excluded and ignored. So just try not to use a ton of symbols in your negative keywords unless you really need to. If you do, take a look at the rest of this help section and see what applies to you. And before we jump into an account, I do want to come down to this keep in mind section just to rehash some of the stuff that we've already talked about and put a finer point on it. First, Google starts off by saying to choose your negative keywords carefully although it is certainly in Google's best interest to tell you to choose them carefully because you will then exclude searches from your potential ad spend, I think that they're right about this. Negative keywords are a great tool that you can use to make sure that you're focusing on just the right search queries, but if you go too overboard, you're gonna lock yourself down and you're not gonna get as many eyeballs and clicks on your ads as you might like. Next is that close variance thing that I mentioned earlier. So that's anything that has to do with plurals, misspellings, or any synonyms of your negative keywords. If you want to make sure that any of those variants are included, you will have to create a new line item for a new negative keyword within the account. 
I'm going to skip over the broad match modifier piece because we no longer have broad match modifier even as a target keyword, so that part shouldn't matter. And the last piece I want to talk about is the length of a search query. For whatever reason, Google has decided that the 16th word is the cutoff. So as long as whatever negative keyword you have is part of the first 16 words within a search query, it will be excluded from your search traffic. But if for some reason somebody types in a very long search query and your negative keyword has something to do in words 17 or beyond, your ad could still show up for that. This is just a limitation of the system, but they do add it in here just so you'll know. And there's an example here that shows you the difference between using a query with discount in it within the first 16 words and beyond. Just keep in mind that if you see a really long search query that you technically have a negative keyword for, odds are they used whatever negative you have beyond that 16th word. Okay, with that, let's jump into the Paid Media Pros account and I'll show you all the levels where you can apply negative keywords to your account. I've narrowed the view down to be only search campaigns because we're, again, only talking about search negative keywords. Now, regardless whether you are in this all campaigns view for search campaigns, if you're in an individual campaign, or if you're in an ad group within a campaign, you can always navigate to the negative keyword section by coming over to keywords and then negative keywords. You can see that we don't have any negative keywords in place because this is just a placeholder account. So let's go ahead and start adding negative keywords so we can see all the levels that we have available. There are two different ways that we can add keywords to any component within our account. We can either add negative keywords directly to a campaign or ad group, or we can use a negative keyword list. We'll talk about lists here in a second. For right now, let's focus on just adding negative keywords within campaigns and ad groups. Since I'm on the search campaigns tab, the first thing it's going to ask me is what level I want to add them to. By clicking the drop down, I can either select campaign or ad group. And then based on that, I need to then designate what that campaign is. So here I get to choose between the four different campaigns that we have. Or if I went to ad group, I would then get to select the campaign. And then I would get to select the ad group itself. And you could see here that it would show up in the search DSA placeholder and then ad group one. You can also add individual keywords to that ad group by coming over into the main navigation, clicking on DSA placeholder, ad group one, adding keywords, and then it'll already say that it's in ad group one because that's where you've navigated to within the account. Doesn't really matter where you are navigation wise, you can pretty much always add keywords to the campaign or ad group level as long as you're in there. Once we're ready to start adding keywords, all you need to do is come down into the text field and start typing all the keywords that you want as negatives. Now I have an example of a broad phrase, an exact negative keyword. Obviously most of these have nothing to do with our account, but it just shows you the type of punctuation that you would add to those negative keywords, just like you would with regular search keywords. And then once you're ready, all you have to do is click save. And you can see here that now those negative keywords are applied. And you'll also be able to see what they are added to, which can be really useful if you're trying to navigate within a campaign or a set of ad groups. You can easily see what these negative keywords are attributed to and make sure that you're excluding things only based on queries that you either want to exclude completely or any sort of query mapping that you're trying to do in your account. Now, this is the second time I've talked about query mapping, so I do want to give an example of that at a very high level, just so you understand how negative keywords can work for query mapping within an account. Let's retain the example of running shoes that Google used for the match types and assume that we have a campaign for running shoes that has three ad groups, running shoes, red running shoes, and women's red running shoes. Each of these are different degrees of specificity, and those are reflected in the keywords in each ad group. The idea with query mapping is to make sure that your ad copy, landing pages, and search queries are as relevant as they can be within each ad group. That way you're speaking to somebody directly. It does not make sense to advertise women's red running shoes to somebody who only typed in running shoes. And there's also a missed opportunity in advertising running shoes as a whole to somebody who typed in something as specific as women's red running shoes when you could match that better with ad copy and landing pages. So to make sure that we have the most specific ad showing where possible, we're going to add negative keywords to map everything. In this example, women's red running shoes is the most specific ad group that we have, but it might make sense for us to add in some exact match negatives so that we ensure that we show only for the more specific queries. 
So for this one, I'm going to add in two negative exact match keywords to make sure that we don't show up for them. I added exact match because neither phrase nor broad makes sense because I don't want to exclude any query with running shoes or red running shoes. I only want to exclude the exact match version of those queries because they should trigger ads for additional ad groups. Now for the red running shoes ad group, I'm gonna do a couple things. I'm gonna carry over the exact match for running shoes because I still think that I can have a better ad if I target people for red running shoes, but I also need to exclude anything that has to do with women's because I have a more specific ad group for that. If I'm doing query mapping, my negative keyword for red running shoes is gonna look like this. Here we have that running shoes, exact match negative keyword, and I've added women's. You'll notice that I did not add the apostrophe in women's because per that symbols section in the help article, apostrophes will be ignored. So it doesn't make sense to carry it over. You might as well just use women's without it. Continuing up this chain for query mapping, for running shoes, I don't need to exclude anything in an exact match fashion, but I do wanna make sure that I don't trigger any ads for anything that has to do with red or women's red running shoes in this more general ad group. So here are the keywords that I'll add. Now all types of search terms that have to do with red or women's, ideally will be triggered based on their more specific ad group and they won't show up here, but I will still capture the higher level, more generalized searches around running shoes. Now, before we close out, I did talk about utilizing negative keyword lists. So I wanna talk about those really quickly. In the example keywords I put in place here, you'll notice that it is added to the search DSA placeholder in ad group one, and I added them directly to that ad group. But for many of the accounts we work on, search queries with free or login are considered low quality regardless of what campaign, ad group, or anything that it was triggered in. So in that instance, we like to utilize a negative keyword list and apply it across many different aspects of the account so that we don't have to add it individually to all ad groups and to all campaigns. To make a new negative keyword list, we're gonna be out of the main navigation, but we're gonna come up here to tools and settings and go to negative keyword lists under the shared library. To create a new negative keyword list, just click the blue plus button. You get to give the list a name, which is really useful so that you'll know what types of keywords are in here. I pretty much always make an account wide negatives list in every account I'm in. This is gonna be a pretty easy one for that. And this way I know that when I'm doing any other work within the account, if I create a new campaign, whatever it is, I just need to apply this list to that campaign regardless of what it's about because it's gonna exclude low quality searches across the board. So I'm gonna carry over those keywords that I talked about. And now to save this list, all I have to do is click save. You can see here that I have my new negative keyword list. It has two keywords in it and it has no campaigns. So to apply this to a specific campaign or ad group, you can do this in a couple of ways. You can either click into the list itself and then come down here to apply to campaigns where you'll have the option to apply it to any of the campaigns that it's eligible for. Or we can go back into the main campaign navigation. I can then click the blue plus button, come over to use negative keyword list You'll see that I then get to choose which campaign I wanna have it added to. And then I can just check the box next to the new account wide negatives that I set up and click save. Now you can see that at this high level for all search campaigns, they have the negative keyword itself for the individual ones I added. And then the list is added here. And then you're able to see what levels it's applied to and which campaigns and ad groups it's added to within the account. Negative keywords do give you quite a bit of control within your account to make sure that you are only showing ads for searches that are a good match to your business and you're excluding any of those that just aren't quite the right fit to help save you money and make sure that you're focusing only on higher quality users. We have a lot of flexibility with negative keywords based on either the match type or whether or not you utilize it at the ad group, campaign, or negative keyword list level. So while you're adding your keywords, just make sure that you're paying attention to each of those different pieces so you're excluding all of the terms that you want to. Just like with everything else on this channel, if there's anything I missed or you have any questions about negative keywords or negative keyword lists, feel free to leave us a note in the comments below. Thanks for watching our video. If you thought it was useful, give us a thumbs up below. We release a new video at least once a week. So if you want to get notified of when a new one comes out, be sure to subscribe to the Paid Media Pros channel.